And today we're going to be talking about energy, more specifically the energy contained in capacitors and capacitor banks. Let's get started. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. All right, so capacitors contain energy in the form of electricity, and in the form of an electric field inside it. Now, the formula for calculating the energy in a capacitor is one half C V squared, where C is capacitance in farads and V is voltage in volts. Now, this formula for finding the energy in joules of a capacitor is similar to the formula for finding energy from a moving object. So in physics, a moving object has the energy where joules equals one half mv squared. Now this means that m is mass in grams and v is velocity in meters per second. Now with this in mind, we can use the two things that are stated on the capacitor, the capacitance and the voltage to calculate the exact amount of joules that are in each capacitor and capacitor bank, which should be pretty cool. Let's start off with this small capacitor. This capacitor has a capacitance of 120 microfarads and a voltage of 400 volts. So we're going to calculate that out. We're first going to start by dividing 120 microfarads divided by 1 million because that translates it to farads. And so that we get that small number, and then we multiply that times 400 squared times 0.5. This capacitor can hold a total of 9.6 joules in the form of an electric field, which is pretty cool. Now this is a very small capacitor, so let's see how much energy a larger capacitor bank can hold. As you can see in this capacitor bank, it has a total capacitance of approximately, wait for it, 1,545 microfarads. And this thing can be charged up to a voltage of approximately 400 volts, such as that capacitor. So let's do a quick calculation with that. We get a energy stored in this giant capacitor bank at approximately 123.6 joules, which is pretty good. Now, Let's go and take a look at the mother of all capacitor banks, right over there. First of all, let's verify the amount of energy in this capacitor bank. And I'll just connect it up to my capacitor tester, and we can see this capacitor bank has a total capacitance of 2,823 microfarads. Now this capacitor bank can also hold uh, about 950 volts. So we have 2,000... This capacitor bank has a total energy storage of 1.3 kilojoules. That's a lot. Let's do some quick comparisons here. We've got this small capacitor with an energy storage of 9.6 joules. This bigger capacitor bank with an energy storage of 120 joules, and my gigantic capacitor bank with an energy storage of 1.3 kilojoules. To put this into perspective, let's take a look at this pretty cool little chart. So we see we have a baseball that has an uh, energy of 140 joules, which is about the same as this capacitor bank. We see that a 22 rifle has an energy storage of 168 joules. <laughs> that means that my big capacitor bank has on the order of nine or eight times more energy than a 22 rifle. This is a nine millimeter pistol has 468 uh, joules of energy inside it. That is pretty good. That means that my giant capacitor bank is twice as powerful as a nine millimeter pistol. We see that a gunshot from an AR-15 has an energy of approximately 1,800 joules. So that's not that far off from my big capacitor bank. So it looks like my gigantic capacitor bank has slightly less energy than a gunshot from an AR-15, which is pretty crazy. As you can see, some of these ones get pretty big. Uh, an AK-47, my capacitor bank is about half the, as powerful as that. If you go into a 12-gauge shotgun, uh, it's about four times as powerful as my capacitor bank. But still, it's pretty cool to compare that. So I hope you learned how to calculate some important uh, stats for capacitors and the amount of energy that they can carry. Have a nice day.
Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.